The changes they've made to that slide right there, I think give this floor plan a whole new life and meaning. Welcome everybody, Josh the RV Nerd of Vicious RV here at my Coldwater, Michigan hometown store with some updated footage on the 27 SGS Keystone Cougar. And this is a floor plan that at one point was the single best selling fifth wheel in the entire RV industry and everybody made their own clone of it. But Cougar has continued to kind of tweak and evolve it over time. And it doesn't hold that number one slot anymore, but it's certainly uh, not, you know, sucking on fumes. What they've done here this year, I think almost unintentionally made this floor plan the best it's ever been in a really long time. First of all, they changed the, the flooring in the slide out to match the flooring in the living room, which I always think looks really good. But when you go with the table and chairs option, they've added a feature this year where your the orientation of your, your fixed tabletop can turn 90 degrees. So if you want just like two people sitting at a dining chair, you can do that. If you want to have somebody over on that high to bed or just some people over playing cards and you want to enjoy some face to face time instead of, you know, digital face time, well, you can enjoy each other in stunningly lifelike 3D. The other thing here is by a, with the ability to turn the table 90 degrees, the long part of the table where you could put your chairs now faces straight out the campsite window. And not only is that just cool, if there is just two of you just sitting down and enjoying uh, a, a meal or something like that, just looking out your window is awesome. But the fact that it can now truly, really function as a, uh, a legit desktop space, I think provides a whole new life into this floor plan because you have a pair of free floating recliners in the back and if you wanted to pull one out to change something around you could totally do that like a big old dog kennel and you always have that sofa in the slide with the kitchen that's what SGS stands for sofa galley slide galley an old marine term for kitchen that the RV industry doesn't really use a whole lot today but the thing is they're packing opposing living room slides in an RV that is barely 30 foot long tip to tail with a just ton of extra features packed on top of it. This is one that I wouldn't turn your nose up at. Take a look at this, it might surprise you. And I would say let's get going and let's get dug in here, but Doug is a lazy bum who has never shown up to work. I've been to many different Bish's RV locations and anytime I've said, let's get dug in here, uh, there's never a dug to be found. So, <laughs> sorry, so stupid. Coming from the entry door, looking around here, one of the things that I love about this is just the window coverage of it. You know, it has better window coverage than nearly any other, say, like, 30-foot fifth wheel I think I've seen. Now, some of the windows are on the back, some are on the driver's side, some are on the passenger side, the camp side of the RV. Um, and again, it, it doesn't, I guess it doesn't really matter where you're going to go. You're going to have some decent window coverage, uh, basically overlooking your seating, no matter where you're at. Now, one of the things they do a little bit different here, they call it their blade pier air conditioning system. And one of the major difference, uh, I couldn't decide if I want to say difference factors or differentiating factors and mush came out of my mouth is that it has a residential air filtration system, which, you know, you don't think about it. RVs don't really have a way of having decent quality air in them. Uh, a lot of people tend to move around a lot of campsites. Like if you're in an area that has a lot of activity, golf carts and all kinds of stuff like that. Well, you know, people tend to, uh, they tend to kick up a storm as it were. They can tend to kick up some dust. So it's kind of kind of handy that you have a way of sort of handling all that. Now, in the back here, it's kind of a little bit of a throwback. Fifth wheels and travel trailers used to have rear wall floating recliners like this every day of the week. This was the norm. And then, um, I don't know if they're necessarily the first ones to do it, but truly, it was Heartland fifth wheels that popularized the rear wall sofa and then side theater seat that we find in so many RVs today. So, whether you like it or not, they're the ones uh, to whom we can point the finger, uh, as it were. Now, I said point the finger, not f flip the... Never never mind. Never mind that before I lose my job. Anyway, um, <laughs> I swear every time I open my mouth in a video, I bet my whole HR team's like, <gasps> like, oh boy, is this the day that Josh gets fired? <laughs> but you know what? I joke about that. Uh, my, my team's very cool. They understand what I do. They, they really leave me alone. They just let me cook. You know what I mean? Now, this used to be called the 28 SGS. And when it became the 27 SGS, they reworked things here and gave it significantly more countertop prep space. It used to be basically that rear wall back there was about all it had. Um, and now it didn't have this peninsula that sticks out. So I guess in a way that does kind of jump into the living area a little bit, but I mean, 
I don't think it, it barges in in any sort of meaningful or obtrusive way. Like, if I sit down over here at the sofa and we look around, uh, I don't think that island is interfering with a single thing whatsoever. Now, down below the uh, big TV, that's like a 40-inch, I think, 4K jumbotron right there. You've got yourself your electric space heat and tootsie toaster. Now, that TV can pivot around for some easy viewing. We're going to see that in a little bit. But in its neutral position, it kind of splits the difference for a little bit of a conversation corner. So I was sitting at the sofa. Now I'm sitting at one of the recliners. Now, the argument that could be made here is that if somebody is occupying these chairs, they could be interfering uh, with the view of the TV. And to that I say, yes, it is possible. But when you have eight seating positions for an RV made for two butts, I think that's a problem you can generally work around. And if you're going to have some guests, I don't think it's too out of the question to kind of like figure out where everybody's sitting so that everybody can accomplish their goals, you know. I just kind of give you a little bit of, uh, you know, the, the point of view of, of you, the owner. A little bit of a ki kitchen toe stubber kicker uh, slide right there, although you may have noticed how the, the dining and entertainment slide is carpetless and floor flush. That's also a little bit larger 22-inch oven, which I think is kind of a nice find right there. Um, and up here, we've got a perfect little kind of uh, coffee maker kind of bar or just general appliance bar. And I think, yes, there is. I forgot that there's an extra light down there. So overall, this thing, uh, you know, has some pretty good light action kind of built right into it here. Um, where do we want to begin? I tell you what, we've got all the windows in this RV. I think the windows are kind of a focal point. One of the things I want to do is show you how if you don't want all the windows all up in your face, uh, you can basically just go alakazam and pull those blackout shades down and blot out the sun like the arrows of the Persian army. Now this table right here, all like cougars with a freestanding table have this table now, which I think is very, very cool. And this is something that can benefit so many different floor plans. And is it a full-on traditional desk? No. But can it perform some of those cool functions? Personally, I think so. And uh, I, I think that, you know, definitely, I, I've had worse setups in hotel rooms, and I've gotten a lot of work done in them. I don't see why a, uh, a common consumer couldn't, you know, you might have to run like a little power strip over there or something like that. One of the things that I have for my laptop is a little docking center. I just plug my docking center in, then plug that in my laptop and I'm done. All the other things are hooked up to it, which makes life a lot simpler when you're a laptop warrior like I am most of the time. Um, your kitchen, I will tell you, isn't, isn't huge. It isn't amazing. But for no more space than it occupies in the RV, the kitchen actually is surprisingly robust. You've got a couple big drawers when you need them. You've got a uh, decent uh, wastebasket space right where you need it. The RV w does not have a traditional, like, there's the pantry, though. That is one area in which this RV does kind of fall a little bit short. If you're a person's like, man, I've got to have a pantry. I've got to have a vertical pantry that I stack everything in. The overhead cabinets up there, the countertop, uh, or all the storage under the countertop, that don't cut it for me, Jack. Okay, I respect that. I totally get that. This may not be the right RV for you. And we certainly have other RVs with like, you know, say like a Cougar 30 RLI. Well, yeah, it's going to do all those things, but it's also a solid three, three and a half feet longer than this. Uh, you know, trying to get the RV close to 30 feet with opposing slides, something's got to give a little bit. And that's kind of, you know, where we end up in here. Now, take a look above the shower right there. One of the things that I like is how there's an actual just light in the shower now that just didn't used to be there. Little easy detail factors like that, I think, are so, so handy. Um, it, uh, you know, uh, at night, if you're bathing in the morning or at night before the sun's come up, it's really nice to be able to see what you're doing in the shower. And just like the kitchen, you've got decent wastebasket space going on here uh, in the bathroom, including a couple good drawers here. And considering this is the smaller class of Cougar fifth wheel overall, I think that the, uh, the size and the function and the American-sized friendliness of this bathroom is uh, absolutely fantastic. It's definitely one of the better out there in this class. And uh, one of the ways that I kind of quantify that is there's more headroom in the shower here than most fifth wheels I've seen in this class and category. A lot of them, um, uh, I, I can... Actually, I've been in some where I do have to have my head in the skylight. And you see that this is, this is not one of those. Plus, you've got that big corner seat right there. So if you need to pop up a... 
you know, you need to bring a knee up to be able to shave your shins like Uncle Gary or something like that. You got the uh, easy opportunity to do so. Also, the little details, like I like a, a towel bar instead of a towel hook. I feel like they just dry a little bit quicker. Being fair, though, this does have the conventional four-inch fart fan, like nearly everything else in this class. It's one of the areas that I actually really like and uh, respect Arctic Wolf for. They're very good about putting the bigger vent fans in their RVs right from the factory. Actually, this last year, Arctic Wolf has made some smart moves. They've made some smart, smart improvements overall. Now, you may have noticed, yes, we're generally speaking a carpetless floor. Cougar is still using floor ducted heating. Um, they're using a different kind of heat vent, though, which tends to, uh, and owners have kind of confirmed this for me, keep debris out, and it doesn't hurt your foot, like, when you step on it. It's not that old meat slicer kind of thing. Another thing that they are really good about here is making sure they give us uh, a solid, you know, private bedroom. One of the other things they give us that's really cool, kind of borrowed from, like, Big Sister Montana, is uh, they have one of those magnet holdbacks behind the bedroom door. So if you just want to leave it open like that, it'll actually travel down the road with the door open. And uh, additionally, although you can just turn all the lights off with the in-command panel, one of the other kind of cool things they do is just around the corner here, you do have a dedicated bedroom-only light switch. So you don't necessarily have to go Bluetooth digital with everything to you know be able to operate your lights. Now, something I haven't talked about so far, because we haven't really been able to see them too awful easily, are the inverter-prepped outlets. Not every single outlet in the RV is inverter prepped, but quite a few of them are. And um, like both of the outlets on either side of the headboard uh, up here, if, if you want to, if your RV doesn't already have an inverter uh, running those outlets, you could add one. So even at their most basic solar package, they're still inverter prepped. Now, that the way that I phrase that, I kind of don't like, and I think it's confusing to folks. A lot of people uh, think that solar and inverter have to go with one another they're actually two totally separate independent things but they do very nicely play with one another kind of like in a travel trailer weight distribution and anti-sway are two different functions two different systems but it is possible to build one hitch to to perform both of those functions so it can be a little it can be a little confusing there if you don't know ask questions don't feel by the way like, hey this might be a stupid question ask it please ask it in the comment section if you don't know i want to help educate you um we want to take the time to put you in your best most educated decision possible or uh, uh, position possible to make the best decision possible that's what i'm trying to say anyway now by the uh, by default from the factory of a 15,000 btu central air uh in the living room See that power junction box near the bottom of the screen? We are prepped and ready for a second air. A cool thing, though, if you do get that optional second air conditioner, then it does duct into the entire air ducted system. It doesn't uh, just kind of stand alone or anything like that. Now, uh, up here in the bedroom, taking a look at this storage, kind of like you saw in the living room, how some of it had struts and some of it didn't, but they were at least easy, soft clothes. That's kind of what you're getting up here in the bedroom overhead cabinets. However... Um, all around the bed, above the bed, beside the bed, below the bed, and then over here in this slide, you got a, it's kind of like the kitchen. It's not a big room, but it actually carries a surprising amount of storage in it. Uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. There's one little thing I think could be kind of cool in this bedroom, and that is, uh, you've got this little nook right here. I wish there was some kind of power outlets run into that. Uh, I think that that could be a, uh, a neat little extra device charge station, even a couple USB plugs. I don't know. That's that's just me. Maybe it's not that big a deal. I mean, do you care? Would you like to see them there? Or is it like, dude, I don't care. It's not a big deal. And for travel function, this one's kind of a tale of two cities. It's what I'm going to call travel stayover friendly, but not travel stop friendly, which sounds really dumb here's what i mean you can get to the bedroom you can get to the bathroom so an overnight stayover you know you've been driving all day you stopped at the burger shack on the way you got yourself a bite to eat or whatever you need to finally stop somewhere uh you know you, you could you could do an overnight on a long trip but anything else including refrigerator which is a key travel stop function you're going to lewd uh lewd hmm, nope lose there we go when the slide is closed that's what I was trying to get to say. And in case you're curious, some folks have asked me to try to state this more frequently in my videos. You can see pretty clearly here, cable slide system. And it throws some people off. They say, how can a cable 
push a slide open. Like, I can understand how that, you know, uh, cable pulls the slide open right there. But the thing is, what you don't see is the cable on the outside is a different cable. Cable slides only pull. They never push. One cable pulls the slide in, one cable pulls the slide out. And if you're ever curious, if you get a little slack in your lines, that little thing right there, that's where you adjust it. You loosen those nuts up, tighten up the, the lines, tighten the nuts back down, good to go. Actually, if you'd like a little bit more information on that, I've got uh, a whole video talking about how cable slides work, basically. I've also got a video that breaks down uh, three of your most common slide systems, rack and pinion, cable, Schwintech, and explains kind of how they work and their advantages and drawbacks. If I forget, let me know. I'll try to remember to leave you links in the description for those. I'll probably forget. And I don't know when this is going to publish, but we're officially seeing our first snowflakes of the season as this video rolls on. To which everybody in the Midwest collectively sighs. Although, as a kid, I love the snow. And then I got a car. And driving in it, tracking in and out of your vehicle, bundling up and fighting a seatbelt. I hate it so much. But I choose to live here, so I guess I don't have much room to complain. It's like those people who don't vote but still gripe no matter who wins. <laughs> And if we're going to hop out here and start talking towing, one of the first things I want to say is my generalized uh, recommendation for a tow vehicle on this is going to be uh, something in the way of a three-quarter ton or larger, which might if some folks might find interesting because right on the nose of this RV, it says Cougar half ton. Doesn't that mean it's half ton towable? No, that is the name of the RV. And yeah, certainly there's um, an insinuation there. And is there theoretically a half ton configuration that could handle this yes but is that the general half ton that most people have no and that's why i don't generally recommend half ton towing because airbags for a lacking payload to offset the hitch weight of this rv especially once loaded with cargo is not a valid safety solution in my book that's just that's just my opinion man now up front and side there there's a handful of wires and switches that can kind of look a little intimidating, but it's actually, you know what I just noticed? They have gas struts holding that front baggage door open. I really like that. I don't typically see that even on luxury fifth wheels. That's really nice. Instead of those stupid little clip things that drop the door in your head, ask me how I know. Anyway, up inside there, you've got your general battery disconnect, but then there's a second disconnect. That goes specifically to the factory standard solar package. Up top there, you've got a 220 watt panel, but there are also uh, 440 and 660 packages that will bulk up on all that hardware. And they're always using a nice Victron MPPT charge controller. So not only are they 10% larger on every one of their solar packages this year, uh, but they're always using good hardware on this stuff. Now the 440 solar package includes a 2000 watt inverter. Um, and 50 amp charger the 660 package has a 3000 watt uh sign inverter that can even run one of your air conditioners albeit for a fairly limited time not you're not going to be able to just sit there in the middle of nowhere running your air conditioner non-stop in the sun uh but you know if you're uh, you're doing some traveling and you want to put your dog uh in the rv and then run the air conditioning so you're not accidentally cooking your dog to death uh, you know, while you're inside enjoying Mama's Pancake Breakfast at Bob Evans. Uh, well, that's a, well, no, that Mama's Pancake Breakfast. Oh, my Lord. Apologies. I, I feel like you need to owe a written apology. That would be Cracker Barrel. Which, don't get me wrong, I ain't gonna turn my nose up and no Bob Evans. But, uh, Bob Evans is not, uh, Cracker Barrel in, in, in my book. Um, there's something magical about the bacon at Cracker Barrel. It's exactly how I like it. It's just crispy enough. It's just thick enough. It's just mm, perfect. Anyway, also, they're, uh, what do they call it? Sawmill biscuits and gravy, sausage biscuits and gravy. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. For those who don't understand the attraction to biscuits and gravy, let me explain this. And this is kind of ironic coming from a boy born north of the Mason-Dixon line. But um, I'll explain it for all of our southern friends so they don't have to. Biscuits and gravy is a scientific anomaly. You are consuming flour in both liquid and solid states simultaneously. <laughs> and Lord, it's delicious. That's all I can really say about that. My cardiologist uh, really loves it when I talk about biscuits and gravy on camera. <laughs>
So 30 pound propane tanks mounted side saddle, tankless on demand water heater there. And a cool thing with this floor plan is it only has one sewer outlet. So you don't have to do the, uh, the sewer crawl of shame from hookup A to hookup B. Now down below here, you won't see much because it is forced air heated. It is enclosed. It does have a radiant barrier, but that's just where it starts. They also have holding tank heat pads on every single holding tank and they're thermostatic. What that means basically is they, uh, they'll react to the temperature and do what they need to do. So like if it's above 40 in the belly cavity, the tank heaters don't do anything. If it starts getting below 40, they'll kick on automatically and uh, you know they'll start making sure the holding tanks don't freeze up. Now uh, your water lines are PEX water lines. They can expand a little bit if they need to, if there starts to be a little too much buildup of pressure. The really dangerous thing when it comes to um, winter use and plumbing is actually the, the corners and the fittings uh, on your, your plumbing stuff, because that stuff is hard and can't expand. So one of the cool things Keystone does is they put all uh, fittings and joints basically up above the floor line where they're even more protected and heated than they otherwise would be. And that's actually something that they've been doing, geez, for years. Um, it's the same thing that they do like up on Montana, Alpine, Arcadia, all kinds of stuff like that. It's just the way Keystone, Outback, Outback will do the same thing. Outback and Cougar, by the way, are very close cousins to one another. Like they're not twins, they're not brother and sister. But if you go to a family reunion and you see your cousins, you can see you got a little something in there that you both share, you know? That's what Cougar and Outback are like, they're cousins. Uh, 3,000 pound towing hitch on the back. And as you saw, windows all over the place on this one. And that's one of the things I think is really, really cool with it. It doesn't really, like if you're a traveler, and this being only about, what, 30 and a half feet, 30 feet basically. Um, if you're traveling and you don't know where your next campsite's gonna be, Having windows on every side of the living room is actually really, really nice. And once again, having that potential for a desk function right there, if you get the table and chairs option, which in my experience of, it, I, I would say well over 99% of people do, um, a lot of people aren't even aware that you do have the ability to put a, a, a booth dinette in this floor plan just because it tends to be so uncommon here. But I would be kind of curious, that once again, which way would you outfit the living room on this one? Now, being fair, uh, I try to share good with bad. Awning space, or rather lack thereof, I think is the best way to describe the campsite of this one. So to that note, somebody might ask, well, can you put a second awning on the face of the slide? Can you option that on? Could your dealership do that for us, Josh? And the answer is no. There's no structure in the wall designed to accept an awning. There's no place to mount it. They, there isn't the stuff in the wall needed to do that. So as a result, this is a one small awning RV. It's an RV that prioritizes interior living space over exterior stuff, effectively, you know? Gives you the biggest living room it can in about 30 feet towing it down the road. Um, if that was beneficial, if that was helpful and useful information, if I kind of headed that horse off at the pass or something, do me a favor, at least hit the like button on that video or leave me a little, can't, okay. Just say thanks, nerd. Now recently, Arctic Wolf just tried their hand at this floor plan and it's not really uh, hard to find which one I'm talking about because it's also called the 27 SGS. It's not a mystery, but this is where it all comes from right here, folks. So let me know what you think about this one. What do you think about the updates and what could they continue to evolve and improve to make it even better for you? I'll drop some links as I always do in the video description to check pricing and availability on this, but as well as check out the video on that, uh, that Arctic Wolf that I mentioned. And maybe if I think about it, a couple other cougars or something, I don't even know. When you're ready, we're ready. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun and happy camping, everyone.